There are a lot of conspiracy theories about the WHO. Some of them are far-fetched and untrue. However, this doesn't mean that there are no severe points of criticism to be made about this institution. The simple truth that the WHO isn't populated by aliens or reptilians doesn't suddenly make it a democratic institution, let alone the best institution to tackle the health challenges we're facing today. The supporters of the WHO would say they do not possess any real power. They have no army. They cannot lay sanctions. And their advice is only a recommendation, which is not mandatory. The board is chosen by delegates of all member states. And these states finance the WHO. So no problem at all, right? Sunshine and rainbows. Well, no. Sorry to ruin the dream, but yes, this club does yield a lot of power. They use naming and shaming to force people back in line. So how does it work? The WHO is used due to it being seen as an authority on science by countries and politicians who sell it as a neutral institution. But in reality, it's more of a lobby group, since the WHO is financed for a whopping 80% by private donors. Not exactly a neutral institution, rather a megaphone for certain industries and rich people. Instead of doing just science, they claim to be science. What happens here is that science becomes institutionalized by the WHO, just like religion is institutionalized by Iran, with little room for discussion. Consequently, the pressure is mounted on countries who fall out of line. For how can you be against science? The media is liable to bash you for not believing in science, if you even try to open the debate. But that is not real science. Science can only progress if it's challenged all the time. Real science means everything can be questioned, after which a large open debate follows between scientists. In an ideal world, some sort of consensus is reached without the influence of political parties or big companies. If we look into our history, scientific progress is often made by dissident voices. But looking at science as if it were a religion, we're denying any scientific progress. This way, science becomes an absolute monolithic fixed set of rules, made up by an institution influenced by an industry with no room for debate or improvement. The past behavior of the WHO doesn't exactly show a hopeful image for the future. On more than one occasion, the WHO has proven to be corrupt and slave to some of the world's most notorious totalitarian regimes, or a moneymaker for certain industries. So what is the cornerstone of every democratic regime? Transparency. So why was it decided the executive board should be chosen anonymously? Now, this opacity is taken a whole step further with the pandemic treaty. You can twist and turn it any way you want. It means more WHO and less freedom for its member states. Again, the WHO supporters will say it's a tool to bring some countries who don't want to cooperate on a global scale back in line. Like China, for instance, who denied an investigation about the origin of COVID-19. Isn't the idea that an undemocratic body has to safeguard the undemocratic regimes? A paradox by itself? But even then, many of those countries will not cooperate anyway, or trade it for influence, both of which are bad options to begin with. But the countries that follow the guidelines of the WHO do it under pressure from this institution, which will use any means to shame anyone who doesn't abide. Recently, Tedros. The candidate of China has been re-elected head of this organization. But not by the people. The membership of Taiwan has even been denied under pressure from China. Not even the Taiwanese press is welcome in the WHO anymore. Despite Taiwan still being a democratic regime. Transparency? It doesn't stop there. There's the overrated but apparently very expensive Mexican flu. There's this sudden end to COVID-19 which required unseen measures, but strangely seems not worth of much evaluation afterwards. 
For private foundations, as compared to public funders, there is no clear way for citizens to raise concerns with the problematic program. The endowment is managed by a team of outside investment managers. We could go on for a long time about the controversies that have happened in recent years. And in fact, we might. Because of the long list, it is worth a second and perhaps even a third movie. And I've said, so to conclude, are we conspiracy theorists? It seems like the only defense the advocates of more power to an undemocratic institution have left. We leave that up to you to decide. For us, the truth is far simpler. Despite some naive visions, in the end, the farmer wants to get rich and the people want to be healthy. Funds shouldn't come from private companies. Transparency is needed. We need to take the control of our health system out of the hands of Big Pharma and place it back in the hands of the people. We all pay for it. It's rightfully ours to decide what to do with.